After a huge offensive output against Kansas State, it looks like the Sooners are on a roll again. But don't they need somebody to lose? Hello, I'm Mike Kaler. Welcome to the latest edition of OU Football with Jake Trotter. Jake, you got to see OU's big win over K-State on Saturday. But one of the most important things that happened to OU might have been not there, but Penn State beating Ohio State in that game. Don't the Sooners need somebody to lose in order to move back up into the national title? They do need some help, but they still have some opportunities for help left. It would have been nice uh, for Sooner fans had Ohio State uh, beaten Penn State at home, but uh, Penn State could still lose at Iowa. Stranger things have happened. Uh, Alabama still has a tough road, and uh, so does Texas going to Texas Tech on the road this weekend. So a lot of opportunities for teams above OU to lose. Do you see the OU winning out, though? Is that... Are they going to be able to take care of business, or are we still kind of on a shaky foundation there? Well, I think they'll win their next two games. I mean, Nebraska's improved, but still not, you know, an upper echelon team in the Big 12. A&M is pretty bad, uh, even though that's a road game. And that gets you to uh, November, where you have Texas Tech and Norman, and then you have Oklahoma State on the road, and those are going to be the two telling games for this team. All right, talk a little bit about the K-State game. It looks like the running game is back to 100%. DeMarco Murray had another good game. Have they figured out whatever was ailing them a few weeks ago? Yeah, maybe so. I don't know how, how great the run defenses they've played the past couple of weeks, uh, certainly not on the level that Texas was, but still the way that they're blocking both in the offensive line, the tight ends and the wide receivers has been positive. Uh, DeMarco Murray's showing some of the old moves that he had last year, and of course Brown's running well too. So, yeah, it's been a very positive development for these past couple of games and something they're going to need uh, going into the backstretch of the season. Talk a little bit about the defense. It seems like that's kind of the latest buzz of what everybody's worried about. You know, Freeman, the quarterback from K-State, has some really big plays that they're able to break, and the secondary looked like it was having some trouble. Well, the one thing the defense did do well was it caused five turnovers, albeit a couple of them were just terrible throws by Freeman that he should have just taken a sack on or, or thrown the ball away. But uh, they haven't always gotten those turnovers, so the defense hasn't been playing extremely well lately. They're, they've actually been playing fairly poorly, allowing, what, 30, uh, 45, 31, and 35 in their last three games. Uh, that's asking for trouble uh, against Texas Tech and Oklahoma State uh, with how well those offenses are playing. So um, they need to right the ship over the next couple of games against Nebraska and A&M and have some defensive momentum going into the, the final two games of the year. One of the things we didn't get a chance to talk to you about since we talked last was this story about Sam Bradford that you did going to the draft. Mm -hmm. ESPN ranks him number one. He's had his three years with his red shirt year, so he could leave if he wanted to. Where, what do you think he's going to do and what do you think he ought to do? Well, I think he's going to come back. There's no indication from him that he's going to leave early this year. Um, it's tough to turn down 60 whatever million dollars. Um, so it's just whatever, whatever he thinks at the end of the year. But uh, I think to him there's something to be said for coming back. Uh, his junior year experiencing uh, all that college has to offer and, and college football has to offer. Is that is him being up there a reflection of how good he's playing or is it a reflection of just kind of quarterbacks available in this class? What do you think? That well, is? I think it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a reflection of how he's playing, but also, too, um, you know, he wouldn't be the number one draft pick, according to ESPN, just because the quarterbacks are bad. Now, if for some reason he were to slip in the rankings a little bit, and I'm not saying one to the third round, but maybe from the top pick to the tenth pick, he still might be the first quarterback taken, which is still going to mean big money, and that's why it might be beneficial for him to come out this year, simply because if you're the first quarterback taken, uh, you might get taken higher than you would normally because some of those teams really need a quarterback, especially some of those bad teams uh, in the NFL. Is, it, is Sam just more of an NFL guy than maybe like a Chase Daniel and some of these other... Yeah, he's more of the scared. prototype, 6'4", you know, 225 pounds. You know, Chase is under six foot, so is Todd Reesing. So is half the quarterbacks in the, in the Big 12, really, when you look at it. But uh, Bradford really is the prototype. Very similar to Josh Freeman in terms of uh, size and stature, although Freeman's a little bit bigger. But that's what the NFL scouts are looking for, the 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", guys. Anywhere between 2, 220 and 250. Uh, you know, kind of like the Ben Roethlisberger's uh, of the world are the ones that even get drafted that high. Talk, uh, just close out a little bit here with Heisman talk. Where is Sam still in that, or is this McCoy, is Colt McCoy kind of locked it up now? I don't think he's locked it up. I think if they beat Texas Tech this weekend, it's going to be really tough to pass Colt. Um, although as soon as you know Texas loses and he has a bad game, I think people are going to be looking for you know the next big thing. And if Sam keeps producing the numbers he has, mm -hmm. then uh, I think he's certainly going to be in the running. Really, you know who who else is there besides Colt McCoy and Sam Bradford right now? I mean, you look across college football and. There's no one that's all that impressive. So um, as of now, I think those are the two guys until something else happens. All righty. Thanks, Jake.
That'll do it for this edition of OU Football with Jake Trotter. Be sure to catch all of Jake's stories along with the best coverage of OU Football anywhere on NewsOK.com, NewsOK.TV, and every day in the Oklahoma. <laughs>